questions asked most frequently in Jamaican diaspora circles have continued to challenge successive Jamaican government efforts since 2004 to engage with the Jamaican diaspora effectively. Still unanswered are where are the mechanisms for effective engagement? And is there an effective consultative partnership between the government and the diaspora? The Jamaica 55 Diaspora 2017 Conference held in Kingston, Jamaica, July 23rd to 26th, moved closer to answering these questions, but we are not there yet. Conference convened under the theme Partnering for Growth, focused on Jamaica's economic growth agenda, including as its main goals and objectives to one, deliver a program that would facilitate the sharing of information and constructive dialogue around national imperatives. Two, develop strategic actions for partnering with and optimizing the Jamaican diaspora's human and financial capital. Three, highlight initiatives for growing and sustaining the contributions of the diaspora to Jamaica's growth agenda. Four, facilitate dialogue between young people in Jamaica and those in the diaspora. And five, ensure the conference outcomes are specific, actionable, and implementable. When people come back home, yes, they want to hear the speeches, what the government plans to do, but they also want to reconnect with the culture, with the roots. They want to feel at home. And so it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all back home. Welcome home. The organizers should be commended for organizing a highly informational conference and for an impressive display of public-private partnership in engaging with the diaspora. Today, we achieve another milestone in our history. As we meet for the seventh time as the Jamaica Diaspora Conference, against the theme of the 55th anniversary of the independence of Jamaica. Under the chairmanship of the Honorable Earl Jarrett, Chief Executive Officer of the Jamaica National Group, the well-organized conference advanced most of the objectives set for the conference, but much work remains to fulfill the ultimate objective of effective diaspora partnership and engagement. The stage has been set. expecting to network with other individuals, um, like-minded individuals, to meet new people. Um, I'm also expecting to learn new things about the culture, about some of the prevalent issues that are going on um, in our region as well as um, in Jamaica. 
So I think there are plenty of opportunities that are available for everybody here. I'm really looking forward to connecting and reconnecting to Jamaica. Only break XYZ because the conference is about partnering for growth is an excellent theme. And my expectation was that every member who comes wants to be engaged, wants to really help Jamaica in terms of partnering and development, both economically but also specifically for health. And from my perspective, if we don't get the health piece right, nothing else can happen. Businesses can't uh, grow, um, public safety would be an issue, and other issues in terms of education because it's all related to health as well. Well, I work in health, um, in public health, and I think a lot of the themes and the challenges that we experience in Canada around public health are very similar across countries, across borders, nationalities. And so I think some of the experiences that I've had or some of the things that I've seen or been able to do, if there's opportunity to share that information with individuals who are here, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm happy to connect with individuals. People have questions, I'm happy to answer them. So the little that I learn, I'm happy to share with others and receive what others have to share as well. People in, in the Caribbean region, many of us are, are abroad, who, who, who sits at the seat of influence, where we, are, where we are connected with people. And we can use that kind of influence to make sure that we get the resources, the human capital, to help our people back home. Even though the future leader positions may come and may go, and uh, different things may continue to arise in Jamaica, there's always work to be done. So I hope to continue to work with especially the Mannings Boys Home um, in St. Elizabeth, and to continue to support them in trades development, skills development, education, infrastructure development, and to continue to help build them up so that they can be future leaders for Jamaica as well to continue to support both Jamaicans abroad and back at home. From this conference, we expect to uh, blend a lot more with the Ministry of National Security, uh, which we started this process last October. But we also expect that we will taper and merge and assimilate some of our ideas with the police force as well as the, the military to include the um, port security and some other areas. My focus is immigration. I've been criticized for it a little bit, but I feel a passion for people who've already been deported from the United States and they're helpless. Some of them have no way of, you know, really living the life that they've lived. They've left families behind children. And so my goal is to try to do whatever I can to do them. So since as early as 2008, I started working with deportees. And I came down the first time, discovered that there was a young man who was sent back from the United States and who, whose mother was a U.S. citizen and I discovered a way to bring him back to the U.S. And I did that pro bono. A few years later, right after the last the diaspora conference, Wayne Golden and I worked together with a number of people who had been removed from the United States. We discovered a brother and sister, siblings who had been deported, who had a U.S. citizen mom and I was successful in returning them back to the United States as U.S. citizens. So we continue to do that. I started a task force uh, in November of last year. It's an immigration and deportation prevention task force. We go from state to state and we present um, with the different attorneys on issues re regarding green cards, citizenship, and try to help people prevent themselves from being deported. As a Jamaica Diaspora Advisor Board Member for the Southern United States, I primarily look over 13 states and my duty really first and foremost is to advise the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade in Jamaica on all diaspora issues and really to provide a sense of what's going on in our community and what the desires are of our Jamaicans living in the diaspora to contribute to the growth and development of Jamaica. And sometimes it's not necessarily uh, advice that might uh, be the ones that people want to hear, but we have to be very brutally honest with what's going on and keep a, a political perspective to what we're doing. Also, I am charged with trying to build or continue to build the capacity of the diaspora within our regions to sort of galvanize us in a more cogent way so that we not only can contribute to policy making in Jamaica by giving advice, but also in our own areas where we reside, because I think that is so important that we become uh, factors and determinators of what happens in our own communities where we live. The, the government has, has to really be open-minded to, to, to what the diaspora is doing. Uh, in, in that, they, they need to 
capture uh, some of these very, very essential things to make sure that they, 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 they utilize them in, in, in reaching the people in the country. And as I said yesterday, uh, when there is this kind of an, an, an engagement and when there's this path of growth in, in, in our country, it, it, it should not only help the world to do in the country, but those who are marginalized, disenfranchised, uh, even those who are penalized through the incarceration system, we, we must find a way to, to, to reach uh, those people and, and to make sure that we pull them up from, from the guttermost, so to speak. And, and, and I believe that that should be a message to the leaders of our Caribbean country. Wherever there are young people, I go. If it's a Christmas party, if it's a sporting event, if it's um, a cultural event, wherever they are, I will go to them. And I often try to use, especially platforms that millennials tap into, such as social media, to sometimes speaking face to face, because sometimes it's as basic as explaining to them that they are a part of something that's much bigger. They are a part of something. And the blood that runs within them is something that's very, very special special and that connects all of us. So it's something that um, I always continue to do. It can be as simple as a conversation. It can be as simple as telling them, hey, I want you to connect with this person. Hey, there's this organization that you can um, volunteer with and just keep going and going and going. It's one of the reasons why the previous administration had introduced a minister with specific responsibility for the diaspora was to signal to the community the importance they had or have to Jamaica so that there isn't a minister who is specifically tasked. I think that is a little bit problematic. Problematic in terms of the extent of the work that needs to be done, and problematic in terms of the symbol or the signal that it sent to the members of the diaspora. But the upshot is, notwithstanding all of that, I'm glad that we're having a diaspora conference um, this year. I detected a rise in the level of optimism among conference attendees. And there was the perception of seriousness in the approach of the conference organizers, evidenced in part by the increased role of the private sector. My impression is that there's been a bit of ambivalence as it relates to the diaspora. People see the diaspora as contributing some two billion US dollars in private transfers to families. And many persons have measured the diaspora simply in that context. People yes. still reflect on the diaspora and its origins and not what it is today. And so today we got a report from the Caribbean Policy Research Institute which spoke to the contribution of the diaspora. And they are estimating that the diaspora is contributing almost 24% of GDP yes. when they measured all of the indicators in terms of savings and investments, remittances, and the businesses that spin off remittances, exports, philanthropy you're looking at a community that is quite significant. And I believe the study made an interesting observation that we need to treat the diaspora community and the Jamaican community as basically one economic space in two different locations. So I think that what's happening is that up to now, there's been a feeling that the diaspora is good for us. But I think the Capri study today demonstrates that it's not just good for us, but the larger numbers of persons in the diaspora, three million more persons, what we saw today as well, which I believe for many Jamaicans they did not understand, was that the diaspora represents a highly, in, a highly educated community. People tended to have a view of still where the diaspora fell on the, on the demographic pole. I think today made it clear that we're looking at a fairly highly educated community, highly, inve highly invested as well. The mm -hmm. income levels for the diaspora mm -hmm. are very high. So I believe after today, if we get that message out, people will begin to understand that this diaspora is a very, very important part of our economy. And you can but imagine the state of the Jamaican economy with the limited growth that if you were to take out that diaspora, what we would face. I commend the diaspora at large, watching and listening right now. You're well represented here this evening. I want to thank and commend you for your unwavering support of this Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference as we anticipate building on foundations, strengthening bonds, and creating new pathways. Convened under the leadership of Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. The 2017 conference attracted the largest gathering of Jamaican diaspora so far. Between 1,200 and 1,400, mostly from the US, Canada and the United Kingdom, but included Jamaicans from all corners of the globe. 
and included a number of local participants who attended the conference. The government should recognize that true partnership means consultation and respect for the views and the expertise of the diaspora more broadly. It is not merely a question of telling the diaspora what the government wants, nor is it the solicitation of the views of a few members of the diaspora, some of whom have limited connection to the broader diaspora communities. However, as I stated earlier, there is much work still to be done. I would be remiss if I failed to draw attention to some of the deficiencies. For example, the program was overly intense with information and not enough time for diaspora response and discussion. While efforts were made from the floor to offer critiques and suggestions, these were not as comprehensive as they might have been had there been prior broad consultations with the diaspora on the objectives of the conference, and had there been advanced dissemination of more details on the objectives of the conference. Diaspora expertise and input could have been marshaled more effectively by the ministry. I also found the marketplace with over 30 exhibitors to be quite valuable in providing information on the range of products and services offered to the diaspora. We are Moreland Development Company Limited. We are Jamaica's premier developer of gated, eco-friendly communities. We are primarily located in central to western Jamaica. So we have properties in Mandeville, Manchester, Lacovia, St. Elizabeth, and we'll be starting White House, Westmoreland soon. Tell us a little bit about the, what you're actually, the type of properties that you're putting on. Well, what we're selling primarily now is the land. But we'll build for people who want us to build. So we, for example, at Moreland Estate, we got a 400-acre property. We put up the perimeter fencing. We installed security guards at the gate. There are armed security that patrol the premises. And there'll be CCTV cameras throughout. So they are secure locations. We then put in the infrastructure, the roads, the water, the light put in first world amenities like a clubhouse, a swimming pool, a gym. At Moreland's Estate, there's a golf course. Moreland Manor will have a fishing lake. And Palmbrook Estate will have a nice palm park so you can walk among the palm trees. And then we sell the land. The lots range in size from a quarter acre up to three quarters of an acre and are priced accordingly. Sounds exciting in the cool hills of Manchester, right? In the cool hills of Manchester, in the breadbasket parish of St. Elizabeth, or on the beachfront in White House, West Milan. We're here um, promoting not only the junior stock exchange, um, but the main market, the main exchange itself. Companies, are, we are saying to persons that we're inviting them to list on the market, as well as small to medium-sized companies to list on the junior market. We're also here to give, it's a wide range of things, so we're here to give persons information about the market itself, how do you get into the market, how to invest, what are the benefits of the market. We're here to promote our e-campus. We actually have an online um, school that persons can sign up to, one face-to-face -face class, and they're able to get information, business information from those classes. What message do you have for the diaspora? Um, the message for the diaspora is to really get involved with the stock exchange and in general the stock market. We have a lot of companies here who really need your capital. When you see the IPOs out, um, feel free to contact your stockbroker and uh, we have 13 of them right now, so contact the stockbroker. Jane Fund Managers have just signed on to be a broker. That's one of the newer brokers. And we're saying to the diaspora, invest in your stock market because it helps. It's a domino effect in terms of the economy because, you know, you are helping a company to expand its business, modernize its business, and yet you're helping the company employ more persons. What we do is we offer residential homes, we do developments, we build communities and our motto is building communities, building a nation. So we have um, four developments now on offer that we're showcasing here at the Diaspora Conference. Our Meadows of Irwin, that's in Montego Bay, 
our Bermond, which is in St. Catherine, and our <coughs> Forest Ridge, which is in Red Hills, and then our newest, newest product, which is just in pre-construction phase, which is our Lofts, which is across from the National Stadium, also in Kingston. For the units that we're offering, they are full developments. It's a development with, it's a community within a community because we all, all our developments are gated, 24-hour uh, security, because we also know that is a grave concern, that's a great concern currently with the diaspora market looking to purchase and also local residents too. We are, we are very pleased to see some of the services and the quality buildings uh, um, that are on offer. And we certainly know that the diaspora is interested, especially those who want to retire and come to Jamaica and even just to have a second home. Um, are these affordable? Most definitely, all our homes are affordable. Uh, when you consider living in the diaspora, what housing costs, uh, you know, in the, in the States, in Canada, in the UK. And of course, you want to think about coming home at some point in time. You don't want to come home and have to be worrying about where you're going to be living. So we encourage our members of the diaspora to look at it, invest now. Don't wait until you're at retirement or approaching retirement because it can also serve as an investment, an income earner for you and help, you know, minimize some of that debt while, you, you know, you're waiting to come back home. We are CIBC, First Caribbean International Bank, and our parent company is Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce in Canada. Uh, we've been in Jamaica for over almost a year, for 100 years. So we really are very experienced. We're a reputable bank and we're a full service bank. We do all the different products, both deposit products and loan products. If members of the diaspora wish to say purchase a home in Jamaica, do you finance that? Um, yes, of course we do. Um, we do, do do international mortgages um, for persons abroad and in Jamaica, whichever, whatever their needs are, we're able to deal with that. You are with UDC? Yes, I am. Okay, tell me some of what UDC is doing, especially in downtown Kingston. All right. Um, well, or as you know, our mandate is to make development happen in designated areas. And um, in downtown Kingston, we're looking to redevelop uh, not only just the waterfront, but also uh, to build areas. For example, there is, we're looking for a partnership to build a multi-story apartment, as well as a car park and um, an office complex. So those are just some of the things that we're looking to do in the near future. We notice as we go through downtown Kingston, lots of buildings which seem to be boarded up, buildings seem to be abandoned. Does UDC own some of those buildings? Uh, well, for what we own, um, there we've been doing some divestment. And I don't know if you've passed recently and seen the work going on at the former Hoshiana Hotel. Um, there's also the Victoria Pier that we've also divested. So um, for what we own, um, there's a divestment process and there are other buildings that we're looking to divest. Is there a lot of interest in developing downtown Kingston? There is, there is, um, but the, you know, we always want persons to invest. Um, the more persons invest, the more we can do. And so we're calling all investors to just come on board. Does UDC foresee downtown Kingston? as one of the shining examples of a waterfront development throughout the world? Certainly. Um, you know, we're working with the government and the Vision 2030, but we have our very own Vision 31, which, um, you know, the plans are just enormous and we're just bursting with energy and enthusiasm to just see it come to life. Today we are actually promoting our Adopt a Clinic initiative, which is something that we encourage persons in the diaspora, both local and overseas, to adopt any clinic. We have over 300 clinics in Jamaica, and any help that we can get from persons would be a great benefit to the country. Uh, we ask that persons visit the Ministry of Health website, or they can go to Adopt a Clinic, send an email to Adopt a Clinic, ja at moh.gov.jm for further information. We know Lasco manufactures quite a wide range of products and we are most interested in how these products might be available in the diaspora. Yes, they are available and you could find them in the, the tri-state area of the USA, also in the Miami area, North Lauderdale, but mostly some of many of the diaspora uh, populations 
is there. Also, we just recently, about a month ago, we started distributing in Maryland. We, you can also find our products in some supermarkets or some uh, chain stores in Houston, Texas. Even included in Alberta, Calgary, we sell our Lasco food drinks. Here at 360, we actually create a closed loop approach to recycling. So therefore, no longer do we just utilize these consumer items and throw them in a linear approach, cradle to grave. But now we do cradle to cradle. We constantly keep the materials in a constant loop. So it never goes to the landfill ever again. And therefore, we create products from styrofoam that is thrown away, plastic bottles that's thrown away, cardboard, paper, and other materials. And therefore, we turn them into beautiful products that is consumed by the consumer all over again, such as um, benches and tables, um, various type of furnishings, flower pots, fences, building materials, the works. And we're, we're constantly revolutionizing other ways of using these recycled materials to create more products. 360 Recycle is actually part of the Social Enterprise Boost Initiative, which is a co-sponsored JN Foundation USAID initiative. And from that, we have 21 special businesses that we call social enterprises. So these are small businesses that are set up to generate a profit, but they have a social mission. So 360 Recycle, that uses PT bottles, styrofoam, etc., to make really great products, long-lasting, affordable products for the Jamaican market. They are one of our social enterprises, and beside them today, we also have DEFCAN. What was the, oh, Defcan, that wonderful coffee that I was just drinking? Yes, Defcan Coffee is a social enterprise that is set up to empower deaf youth in particular. So what is exciting about it, it's not just the fact that its employees are over 90% deaf, um, but the management is as well. And they're really encouraged to be proactive and help to envision for the growth, for the growth of the enterprise. But beyond that, they were amongst the first in Jamaica to train their coffee servers as proper baristas. And in so doing, they have added a lot of innovation to the coffee beverage market. So they have um, added the affogato, which is a lovely, decadent um, scoop of vanilla ice cream with a really great shot of espresso on top. So it starts off as a dessert and then it becomes a great drink. They have added cold pressed coffee and a lot of Guinness drinkers say they like it because it reminds them of Guinness. So not only are our social enterprises doing something extraordinary for special communities, but their benchmarks are quite high and they're producing excellent products and services on the whole. We have been cognizant for a long time of the raw data contribution of diaspora remittances to Jamaica's GDP. In particular, the more than two billion US dollars annually over the past 10 years, contributing 15 to 16 percent of GDP. The Caribbean Policy Research Institute conducted a study of the economic value of the Jamaican diaspora and concluded that due to the economic spin-offs of remittances, the diaspora currently contributes 24 percent of Jamaica's GDP and has the potential to contribute up to 35% if appropriate mechanisms are put in place to facilitate diaspora investment.